Let's open our Bibles to Psalm 103. Psalm 103, basahin po natin ang mga verses responsively. Psalm 103, verse 1, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children. The Lord hath prepared his throne in heavens, and his kingdom ruleth. For overall. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. Let's pray, Lord, thank you for your word. Bless each and every one of us, Lord. May you forgive us for our sins and give us open hearts and mind as we study your word. In Jesus' name, amen. You may all be seated. So in this passage, this passage alone is a message in itself because it's very clear and it's very straightforward. So in verse 1, it says here, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. So David urges himself here to bless the Lord. So we know that David as the king, he has a lot of people around him, but at the end of the day, it's only God that will satisfy his soul. And he knew that. That's why in verse 1, he urges not only the people around him maybe, but he starts to urge himself to bless his holy name. In verse 2, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget, forget not all his benefits. So here, David reminds himself of all the benefits that God has given him. So every time that we don't feel like giving thanks or we don't feel like going to church, we don't feel like praying, we don't feel like reading the Bible, let us remind ourselves of all the benefits that God has given us. And I believe that's enough reason for us to bless His holy name. So in verse... So yeah, only, uh, David knows that the only one who can satisfy his soul is God. No matter how good the food he eats is or how good the clothes that he wears, only God will satisfy. And we all know that a real Christian will know and will not find satisfaction outside God's will. So we know Moses in Hebrews 11:24 to 26, sabi po, By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. So the pleasure of sin will only be there for a short period. But real Christians, those who experience God's goodness in their lives, will find satisfaction inside the will of God with His people in the church. So the motivation of Moses was found in, can be found in verse 26, esteeming the reproach of Christ great greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he hath respect unto the recompense of the reward. So there's a reward. So we must all be motivated. Of course, the bottom line of everything that we do must be founded 
with charity, in charity, right? And also, Christ used the reward for or to motivate in his sermons. Paul, he keeps on repeating that there are rewards waiting for us in heaven. And that's enough motivation also for us to bless his name. And here, in verse, verses 3 to 7, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. So God continues to forgive us, and he will continue to do so because we keep on sinning. That's why repentance is a very important factor in our, in our Christian lives. So who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth be, is renewed like the eagles. So this is the beauty of adaption. As children of God, we can enjoy all the privileges that we can get from our Father. And that is part of our salvation. And that is another reason for us to give, uh, to bless the Lord. When you say bless the Lord in this passage, it means to praise Him and to glorify His name. And David enumerated things that he experienced by the mercies of the Lord. Or of the Lord. So he reminds himself of all the great things that God has given him throughout his life. And I believe God does not fail to give us reason to give praise to him every day. Although he has already been, or he already gave us enough, he never ceases to give us things every day for us to be reminded that we need to bless his name. And here we can see it. In... Verses 8 to 9, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. So the good thing is that the Lord does not deal with us the way people will deal with us. Because people will deal with us on how well we perform, or how well they will benefit from, or how much they will benefit from us. But the Lord, it says here, he does not chide. To, ch uh, to chide is to scold to reprove, to utter words in anger, to find blame or to find fault, to contend in words with anger. So we, as people, we only see the tip of the iceberg. But we tend to unleash to people whenever they did something wrong or said something that we don't like. We tend to unleash on them. But God, although He sees what's underneath, not only the tip of the iceberg, He does not try to he is not easily angered. Why? Because he is merciful, merciful and gracious. Now, God has all the reasons to chide. Of course, he knows everything that we do. But the good thing is that, ang sabi po dito sa verse 10 to 12, He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Yes, we commit sin. We are in the flesh. But God sees our standing and not our state. We, when He deals with us, because He would deal with us on our current state, all of us should be in hell right now. If God will de deal with us on whatever things we do right now, every one of us will not be here. But God, He is slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. Now, sabi po po dito, for as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. So his mercy and his grace will only be uh, will be great to a certain kind of people and to only to those who fear the Lord. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. So what, we ca what can we get out of this verse, Paul? So Isaiah 53.5, sabi po, But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with the stripes we are healed. So if this isn't enough motivation for us to praise him, I don't know what will be enough for us po. Because this is the greatest sacrifice that any man has ever done in earth. And that is enough reason for us to praise him. So verses 13 to 16, Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are just. Of course, he formed us. As for man, his days are as grass, as flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind o passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. If you try to look at it in this way, it's sad, especially if you have loved ones who aren't saved yet. Because life 
we share the same kind of life. Life is short. And if you put it in perspective, we have loved ones who aren't saved yet. But the good thing is that even though we want them to be saved, what I learned from last preaching is that we should not be overzealous that we try to get ahead of God's timing. So wherever God placed us, and whenever that is, we must uh, be faithful in His ministry there. And of course, God is faithful to reward us. So I put it as uh, Hebrews 6.10, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have shewed toward His name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do ministers. So God will reward every good thing that we do. It's just a matter of how and when. The, the only thing that we must do is to do what He calls us to do. And it's not our job, like what we have heard this morning, on how He will help us. So Timothy was a product of the faith that was first in his mom and grandma. Then uh, sabi po dito sa Psalms 103.17, But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear Him, and His righteousness unto the children's children. So God's mercy will outlive us. That's a good thing. That's how great His mercy is. And remember, Moses, even after he died, the people still enjoyed the blessings in the promised land. So His mercy will outlive us. And that is a great comfort. And that is one other reason for us to bless His holy name. To such as keep His covenant and to those that remember His commandments to do them, the Lord hath prepared His throne in the heavens and His kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye His angels, that excel in strength, that do His commandments, hearkening unto the voice of this word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye His hosts, ye ministers of His, that do His pleasure. Bless the Lord, all His works in all places of His dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. So God never fails to give us reason to bless Him although he's already enough. Let's be reminded that whatever we do or don't, it won't add anything to him being God. But he gives, what's, the great thing is that he gave us the privilege to be involved or to be one of the people who can bless his name in our lives. So I hope this will serve as a blessing to everyone. Let's pray.